Hello everyone, my name is Kate O'Gyle. I am the Local Heritage Education Manager for the East Region for Historic England and I'm here today to talk to you about a scroll through link. I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> Put it back to the beginning. A scroll through Lynn is a wonderful piece of artwork through which we wanted to share the town's fabulous local heritage with local schools. It was produced from um, original artwork by a fantastic local artist, uh, Nicola Marais Woods, that she had produced for an earlier project as part of the Heritage Action Zone with Historic England. Um, through the local heritage learning forum, which includes all the, the town's wonderful museums, the library, independent heritage consultants, etc., um, volunteers, enthusiasts in the town, we looked at ways in which we could repurpose this so that schools could access the illustrations and the stories that they represented. I don't know if you can see it too clearly on this image, um, but Nicola had not only looked at the town's buildings, which is what I'm going to focus on today, but at people and events in the town's history, also at the boats, because obviously as a port, this, um, the ships and boats that came into the port were very much part of uh, the town's past. Um, the Local Heritage Forum has created a, an education network that meets regularly, uh, where teachers can meet regularly to um, receive resources and support and uh, ideas, as well as to visit a lot of these uh, buildings that um, we're going to talk about today uh, and have support so that they can use this with, uh, with local children. We call it HEN for obvious reasons. And that's another of Nicola's wonderful, lovely illustrations there. We're now on our fifth um, uh, meeting of this network. Uh, and it's featured in our recent report for Historic England to look at the impact that um, local heritage support for education can actually have. Here we see a report in uh, the local newspaper about the scroll and the work that it, it has gone on to inspire. And we can see the wonderful Rachel Williams from Stories of Lynn now with uh, youngsters from the town who are taking part in various projects uh, that she's running with a copy of the scroll. Um, so it's, it's very much sort of like a, a smaller version of Kingsland's own Bayer Tapestry is how they described it. I really like that. Uh, and it looks at um, elements of the history, landmark buildings as it says, and right the way through from 1204 up to the uh, to modern times. What the newspaper report was celebrating was the fact that we'd gone on to um, to use the scroll to inspire more resources for schools by commissioning Time Will Tell, uh, a local historical theatre company, who to make to actually uh, write a special play based on the story, which they performed in January of this year, just you know when life was still still relatively normal, um, and uh, this was performed as part of the mayor's charity at the town hall, but they also took it into local schools. So um, hundreds of local children have seen this performance, which tells the story of the town and focuses very much on why you have a mayor. Um, it, it, uh, obviously the, the mayor's performance, the town hall raised money for the mayor's charity. Um, what we're now doing is we're commissioning Time Will Tell to turn this into a film. So this resource will then be available for schools even in uh, the current situation. So it's all very exciting. Um, and some of the museums that are involved in this, obviously, we work very closely with stories from Lynn and Lynn Museum, True's Yard, uh, the libraries, but also we work with um, organisations, you know, we work with uh, St Margaret's, we work with the Guildhall um, and with the, the uh, town guides. OK, so a little bit about me before we move on. Um, Historic England might not be too well known to you by name um, and what I manage is called the Heritage Schools Programme, which is funded by the Department for Education. And um, just to clarify, Historic England might be better known to you uh, in its former name as English Heritage. Um, the, the two organisations were separated back in 2015, but Historic England remains as the public body uh, that champions the nation's heritage, that looks at um, promoting it so that uh, it is valued and cared for for future generations. English Heritage 
um, which manages the properties, has become an, an, a, a charitable institution. So the Heritage Schools programme is a national programme. It's been running since 2012. Um, and people like myself, with experience of working in schools, I was a teacher for over 20 years. Um, we work across the country, I work in the East region, to support teachers. Um, and our aims are, uh, for, for me specifically, to help teachers become more confident uh, in identifying so that they know what local heritage they've got and look at how they use it in teaching actually in the, the classroom. But the whole idea is that children will develop a sense of place, a pride in where they live and understanding of its position in relation to the national story. And you can see that we do it um, through uh, meetings like the Heritage Ed Education Network, uh, but I also work in schools um, with helping teachers with planning. Okay. So what I thought we'd do for this session is I would take you through um, a look at Nicola's fantastic illustrations uh, and a little bit of the research that I did. I am not a local history expert um, uh, and that's why it's so important that I work closely with the, the museums and the, the people in the town who really know their story. What I did was to create um, a starting point for teachers, many of whom like myself are not local people. Um, so that they would, the teachers would know where to go next to find out more about the stories that the buildings represent or the history that the buildings represent. So we're going to go through, we'll start with Nicola's lovely illustrations from the scroll um, and then I'll point these out. Many of these buildings may be familiar to you, but at the end of it, um, what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, some, uh, a project that you as individuals might like to get involved with. Okay, so here we go. So we're starting back at, um, in true chronological order, we're starting back at the beginning with one of the earliest buildings that you have in the town, um, which is the Minster, Kings Inn Minster, the church, the Priory Church of St Margaret, um, founded in 1101. And this is obviously Nicola's lovely illustration. And then what I went on to produce, which then accompanies this, because what I should have said is that all the schools that take part get a copy of the scroll and they get a copy of my research that they can then use uh, uh, to inform their planning. So this is a, the slide that I produced um, that goes to the schools. So you can see it's got a little bit of information that I've literally pinched off the internet and then a whole load of links which take it to um, uh, our own Historic England website but to the St Margaret's website um, and then to somewhere else where I found something interesting uh, and I've normally uh, puts just a little bit of an introduction so that teachers can find out what they're dealing with here. And of course, most secondary schools cover the medieval period. Some primary schools might too. So it, it might be that they look at this as a point uh, for their history curriculum, but also, of course, it's a church. So there are lots of other things, parts of the curriculum that it can link to, obviously to RE, but also to um, uh, art, uh, and to just an, an appreciation of um, uh, the fantastic architecture that you have here. Uh, there's all sorts of ways in which schools use buildings like this. Um, teachers are very good at taking children somewhere that, that will inspire them. And you can't get more inspirational than the stories you meet here. And of course, the stories of people who've lived in the town in the past are told through this building as well. So here is a great place to come across the story of Marjorie Kemp, for example but also the, the front has the, the flood markings on it. So that can lead to, to other stories and to other parts of the curriculum like geography. I wonder if you recognise this one, I'm sure you will do, with the fantastic um, markings on the front of it in particular. We're looking here at uh, the, uh, the Trinity Guildhall as it was originally, um, and now King's Inn Town Hall. And this is where next door, where, this is where we'll also find stories of Lynn Museum as well. So I know this well. This is the, the building that I come to most when I come into town. Okay, it describes what's, what's there, but it, it truly is a, a, a beautiful uh, building. And of course, so m many stories, um, so much of the history encapsulated in it, as long with the archives and the museum and a lot of the wonderful artefacts. You may recognise this, this is all that is left um, of the Greyfriars Priory that once existed in the town. Um, the Franciscans, known for wearing grey habits, uh, were friars that arrived in the 13th century, um, whose job was not to uh, 
um, retreat from the world um, and, work, and uh, spend their life in prayer and contemplation, but to go out and work amongst the people. Um, their priory here is uh, the, we reckon possibly the tower was kept when Henry VIII um, ordered the dissolution of the monastic orders uh, in the 1530s. Possibly the tower survived, they reckon, as a, a key landmark for uh, ships coming up the wash. Uh, and now obviously associated with the gardens and, and very close to your war memorial. Another place, in fact, this is one of the first places I visited when I came into Kingsland as an outsider. Um, I have a very strong affection for this church here, which is St Nicholas's, which is in the north, north part of the town, which has a very distinct history um, and is very close to True's Yard, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, and built as um, the town expanded and needed more space for citizens, uh, the, the townspeople, to worship. Again, a, a truly spectacular building and containing one of the only um, church court, courts that I've ever, ever seen before. It really is a remarkable place to go. Um, it's run now by the um, Church's Conservation Trust. They put on fantastic events there now. It's no longer used for worship, um, and, but well worth a visit. It's, you know, the, the people who work there will welcome you and will be very keen to share what they have. And this building here leads to one of the other reason, uh, sort of spectacular moments, I suppose, in Kingsland's history, why Kingsland became so wealthy and has such a wealth, really, of fabulous buildings. And this is the Hansa House and the links to uh, the Hanseatic League um, and to the trade with Northern Europe and particularly those that very powerful uh, group of uh, um, trading cities on the continent um, during the medieval period. This is what made um, having a base here or the Hansa, Hansa merchants having um, a contour here was really, really important um, for the wealth of the town. Um, I have to say at this moment that I am actually broke up, uh, recording this over in Lincolnshire, not far from Boston, um, which obviously was a rival in many cases with uh, the port of Kings Lynn. But we no longer have our Hanseatic warehouses. Um, and in fact, uh, we'd, we'd love to find them. Uh, but this is a really important building in the town's history. Very, very important part of why King Zing became so wealthy. Uh, and continuing with the maritime theme and looking at um, this important, the, the importance of the port and the trade, Nicola chose to include this beautiful, uh, your beautiful customs house built 1683, so we're, we're now beyond the, the period of the Civil War um, and into the later Stuart period, so we're here in, in, in the reign of Charles II. And one of your, uh, a name that comes up with some, a lot of your prominent buildings, that of Henry Bell. So this is the Merchants Exchange, the Customs House. Um, it's down on the quay, the statue that you can see in front of it, I think it's a statue of Vancouver, uh, which is another story that we'll come back to. Um, an explorer um, of the 17th, uh, sorry, the 18th century. So now we can see we've moved from those Gothic um, buildings and the medieval architecture. This is part of the new architecture, the classical buildings um, of the of this era. We've got a, a few more buildings that. Um, we're going to bring in here. We've got, uh, this is the Red Fort. I can't see it because my photograph's in the way actually, so I can't see my notes. <laughs> so I'm going to click forward. So, sorry, Red Mountain Chapel. Um, lots of stories being told here. You can see then all my buildings are not necessarily uh, in chronological order here because we've now gone back to a, a building that was a Tudor one. Um, well, just built the, the, as the Tudors came to power in that, those turbulent years at the end of the Wars of the Roses. Um, and, and I'm obviously a lot of stories linking to pilgrimage and to the, the role that Kingsland played on the route of the medieval pilgrims making their way to Walsingham. Um, and this again, a building, a part of your heritage that I know well, somebody who drives into Kingsland a lot. Uh, we're looking here at Southgate. And although the date on it, this is, this is where they can fool you with the, how they, uh, when they restore things later on, this was actually restored 
um, uh, in 1520, um, which is the date that's on it. But in fact, it's a medieval, it's a 13th century gateway. Right, we're going back into town with some of the, the buildings. You know, there's so many fantastic historic buildings in Kings Lane. It really is jaw-droppingly beautiful. Your streets are full of, of historic gems. And this one here is Thorsby College, um, a college for priests serving St Margaret's Church here. Uh, and then gradually it's used changing over the, over the years. And here we have again the development of the town as, as it grew, particularly growing up to the north, led to the building of another guild hall. Guilds were extremely powerful um, organisations, um, relig often religious organisations, um, but, but where people came together, merchants in the town, powerful people in the town would meet together um, and collaborate in their interests. The guild hall. Um, has a, I'm sure you're aware that those it's been through difficult times recently. It has gone through lots of different uses and is very closely associated with King's Inn's claims to have been visited by William Shakespeare, supposedly performing there in 1592. Um, so a, another fascinating building. And again, I think having a wealth of historic buildings can sometimes be a burden it's a, a, as well as a, as a, as a blessing. Um, and this is one of those where the purpose, its future, is something that you might like to support. Lots of fantastic hotels and hostelries, because obviously lots of merchants travelling into and out of the, uh, the town. Here's one again. This one is associated with um, architect, local architect Henry Bell. This colour, this picture here, it's got it as blue. We come across lots of different. Uh, been through lots of different paint jobs in its in its life this one here on the Tuesday marketplace here we have another um, medieval merchant's house timber framed and now a pub the lattice house the corn exchange here we have a a Victorian building but it's been transformed in its use again now used um, I believe for music events Clifton House with its spectacular barley twist columns of its, its doorway has a long and fascinating history, um, various parts of the house being built at different times. So the doorway that you have here uh, was part of the, a refronting in 1708. But behind that you have an ancient house dating back to the 13th century, but it also has um, an Elizabethan tower. Uh, lots of the buildings on the front, it's, it's down near the river, um, and these towers were ways in which the owners could look out for their ships. So I've been reliably informed. And again, Henry Bell having a, a hand in the, the um, renovation, that's the word I was looking for, yeah, at various times for various wealthy merchants. We're moving into some of the more uh, recent architecture of the of the town. Here we have your fantastic railway station. Obviously railways were extremely important in the economic development uh, of towns throughout the country and, and achieving or gaining a railway station quite late on in the, uh, the in the sort of boom years in the 1870s. I think the original was earlier on but this is the replacement. And still having it is wonderful. And you can see um, I've included from Britain from above, which is a, a free website that you can visit. Uh, and Kingsden features very, has a number, a large number of fabulous aerial shots that were taken. And this one is from the 1950s, but I think there were some going right way up back to the 1920s, Kingsden. It might be well, you know, if you're interested in looking at how the town has changed, that's a lovely website to visit. 
Um, and this, I think, is a truly fascinating building and leads into all sorts of uh, ideas about how people lived in the past. Um, this is a, the Conservancy Board, again, a Victorian building um, down on uh, Common State Quay. Um, but it's, it's grown out of uh, a number of different buildings, including the town's public baths. I don't know about you, but I find the whole idea of public baths, I mean, I think of them as a swimming pool. But when you actually look at the name, um, and I'm very aware of, of ones in other towns, you know, for example, in Boston, again, there was a uh, public baths. Um, looking at cleanliness and her personal hygiene in the past, it's obviously very up, uppermost in our minds now, um, in the current circumstances. Uh, a fascinating building. You have one of the, a, a truly beautiful and fabulous library in your, in your town, a Carnegie Library um, from the great American philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. Um, opened at the turn of the century, but with, the, again, this sort of Victorian, uh, Edwardian love of um, previous sort of styles of architecture. So this sort of Gothic arts and crafts influence here. But there's so much that your local library can offer you. If you're interested in your local history, they have the most wonderful um, local uh, history section. But also the building itself contains um, local heritage in the form of World War I graffiti in the towers. Uh, well worth um, exploring what they can can help you with and a wonderful team that work there. Moving into the 20th century we are celebrating here in this lovely image um, the, the, uh, the majestic, the cinema um, and I think this is actually where some of the original artwork was uh, positioned around here. Lovely to still have a cinema in the town. Um, and I know that um, Luke from the archive, his contribution to, the, to this week's history festival is to look at the cinematic history of the town. Um, I hope you managed to, to catch what Luke was doing. I think this is one of the, I mean, you are blessed with, with some wonderful heritage buildings, but also some truly lovely museums in your town. And Trues Yard is just a gem. Um, again, up in the north end of the town and looking at the, uh, a world that has almost been lost now, the old fishing community. Uh, and this is to be able to go in and actually see what, how that community lived um, uh, you know, in those uh, brick cottages that they have um, preserved, but also then to explore the town's fishing heritage in the museum itself is a, a real gift. If you haven't been, please, please go and support them. It's a, a wonderful place. Um, now, so far, all of these have been what we would consider to be historic buildings. But uh, Nicola also wanted to bring up to date by looking at how the town has developed in the latter part of the 20th century with the Vancouver, her inclusion of the Vancouver um, uh, Shopping Centre, um, which in itself, obviously, you know, are, as we go into the 21st century, these are shopping habits are changing again. Um, it'd be interesting to see what, what happens to our high streets um, and to shopping centres like the Vancouver. Um, but, but I think important to celebrate or to remember its, its role in the, the, the changing nature of the town. Now, there's not so many links to this one, um, and that's because this is not a listed building. Uh, and so far, all the buildings that um, I've chosen, or that Nicola chose to put in here, are listed on the, in, on the National Register of um, Protected Buildings. I'm going to talk a little bit about that now because this is an invitation for you to, to explore the heritage, the built heritage you have in Kings Lynn. Um, it's something that, uh, as part of my role working with schools, we are encouraging or we're encouraging schools to uh, take the children out to explore their built heritage um, and then to post or to put the work and the research that they produce actually um, on our website. The programme is called, or the project is called Enriching the List. Um, and although I work specifically with schools, it's something that's open to all members of the public. This is your heritage and we'd love you to get involved and enrich um, what we know about the buildings. So the list um, is where we put the details about these significant buildings or monuments. And there are uh, nearly half a million entries 
and they are the obvious things. So those buildings I've shown you are some of those are very obvious, have obvious historical importance. The churches, um, the old medieval buildings. Um, some, however, might be surprising. You might be surprised to know that uh, we've there are two roller coasters that are listed. Um, that there are some agricultural buildings, including pigsties. But war memorials have been something that has been a big push to list to make sure that in this uh, in the centenary that we've been commemorating from 2014 to 2018, there was a big program of listing war memorials. But all sorts of buildings, uh, some quite surprising, uh, some that you might wonder why they're on there, and you might then wonder why others aren't. Um, it's well worth exploring, and Kings Lynn has an absolute wealth of these. So if you follow the link here, if you go to the Historic England website and you look at listing, you can search what listed buildings there are around you, um, either via map or via a list. You can just type in the place you want to search. Um, and anywhere that has a listed entry, that's, that has therefore has protection, listed protection, uh, is marked with a blue triangle. And if you click on one of these, so I clicked on the one that was stuck out on its own over here, then you can have a look at the details of the listing. And this is what the list includes. So it will include um, technical information about the building uh, as to what makes it special. Um, and for ordinary people like myself, <laughs> not an architect, not, not, not an archaeologist, not, not an architectural historian, a lot of this is a little bit obscure, shall we say. I am delighted to say that in uh, since Enriching the List started the programme, they have, Historic England has been adding photographs from their photographic collection. So we do actually have a photograph of um, this particular uh, house, Elmer Lodge, out on Goodwins Road. So we can actually see it. And that means an awful lot more to me. I can now see the style of the architecture that it's, it's built, but it's still not particularly exciting. So enriching the list has been, uh, is an opportunity for members of the public who perhaps have particular affinity to certain buildings to go and add their own photographs um, to enrich our understanding. Now that's the only photograph from, um, that's attached to Elmer Lodge, but it may be that it's a, a building near you that, that you could go and actually take more photographs of and add those on there so that people can learn more about um, perhaps the different vistas around it, perhaps particular architectural features, perhaps inside. Um, what we've been doing with school children is encouraging them to go and look at their buildings around them um, and actually producing work of their own and of course children always look at things with a fresh eye. Um, so this is a, these are children actually working, I think these children were working in um, the West Midlands uh, and they went on heritage trails, they took photographs, um, they sought the buildings out so they had to do map work, uh, they then made their own sketches, you can see these youngsters are drawing from uh, the observations, you can see some of them taking photographs in front of a war memorial. Um, and then they did all sorts of different things. So some of them made models, for example, and then the teachers and the heritage managers like myself, we took photographs, we made scans, and we uploaded these on the entry. So if you're looking at the entry to Ketley Hall, you'll find this young person's work as there. And, um, I think we can definitely say it would enrich the experience of going on the list and looking at the, the information. I think what's particularly interesting or particularly exciting is that chil the children got the chance to, to record what they felt and thought about the importance of that. So they were asked to write about um, why they liked it, what it meant to them, why it was important, why it should be protected. So it really got them to engage uh, with the, the buildings, the significant buildings in their area. Uh, and that's what we would like you to do. So we are asking members of the public um, and offering you the chance to go on there and have a look at the, the list um, and to actually um, uh, you know, record your photographs, pictures and your thoughts about it, um, any knowledge um, that you might have. Uh, so the next slides talk about how you can actually do that. There are various links on here. But essentially, if you go to the Historic Kingdom website and look up listing, it will explain it to you. So this is looking at um, all the different information you get. Um, and this is an example from uh, the southwest of, of how, um, of what an, an enriched list entry actually looks like. So Catherine has uh, focused in on this listed uh, milestone. Um, and she's actually written something about the condition that it's in. 
um, which is really important to know. Um, often the photographs that we have are um, decades old, so to have a, a more up-to-date um, representation of what it is now with a comment about the state it's in can really be helpful. Okay, so this is how to do it. So there are, it's really easy, registering is free. Um, you can use the map search, you can go out and take your photographs. Um, and then um, we obviously work with the schools to help them uh, change the entry so it reflects the name of the school and the class, but you can have your entries done in your name. This is the passport that you fill in. It's really relatively straightforward. There's nothing difficult on there. Um, but you have a password so that it's protected, so that your, your details are protected. Okay, uh, so this is, this is Kat taking us through what she did to actually how you actually find the listed things. So she's taking us through um, what it looks like and then how it looks at the bottom of the entry where your list entries would be there. The sort of comments and things you want to do, some advice about the images, about uh, respecting people's privacy, so not having people's faces or car licenses and things on. And here we see some of the entries that Catherine has made. Okay, some details there. So there's lots more information on our website. Um, and if anybody is interested, uh, that is the place to go uh, to find out more about what we do and also about uh, listing and designation and how these decisions are made. Also, if you have anything that you think is missing from the list, that would be, um, you know, we would like to know. Um, and it explains how you can propose buildings for protection. Um, if you're interested in finding out all about what we do for education, then you, there is a section on there which looks at the Heritage Schools programme, which I manage, but also about the uh, resources and activities that we provide for schools. Um, and if you're interested in finding out about more about the Heritage Action Zone, then there are some links here. Um, now, this uh, recording is going to be made available through the Kings in History Festival, through the Kings in Heritage uh, Learning Forum. Um, and I hope it's been useful. Thank you for giving me your time um, and uh, send you all my best wishes. Thank you. <laughs>